First question will come from Eric Bailey, and then we'll go to Joe Bettner. Eric. Hey, Jeremiah. Nice to see you again. Hey, just wanted to ask about Coach Finley. What, what's it been like working with him, adjusting, and you adjusting to another position coach? Uh, what's what's his style like? Um, he's a very uh, I like him. You know, he can you can tell that he played tight end uh, personally. Um, there are some things that he sees in our game that just somebody who you would have to play the position to like kind of understand what he's talking about. And so um, it's kind of convenient for him. He has an older room, and so it kind of just let us go out there and play and he's not micromanaging us. So uh, I like him. He's a, he's a cool guy and um, I'm glad we, uh, we have him on board. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Okay, Joe Bettner and then Jason Kersey. Hey, Jeremiah, I was, you know, speaking to that kind of veteran room you have uh, kind of the guys you bring back as well as a, a dude you spoke on quite a bit in Mikey Henderson, who you think is going to have a big career. What's that competition like as far as everyone's basically back and you've got, you know, so many so many reps to take what 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 has that competition been like and what do you expect it to be like this spring it forces you to focus in on every rep that you have because you only get but so many and obviously there's only one or two guys out there at a time so you have to make sure each one counts but that's something that you can only expect here at the university of oklahoma you know everybody's good so it just makes us that much better to have to push each other and uh to make sure that we're locked in on each and every play Thanks, Jeremiah. Jason Terzi and then Kerry Murdoch. Hey, Jeremiah. Always good to see a bald brother. Um, hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to ask you about Austin Stogner, a guy that, you know, I know you, you work closely with. What he went through last year, uh, how scary was to have as his teammate to sort of see that from afar? And, and how good has it been to have him back in 100%? Yeah, you know, it's it's – we're looking from the outside in. You don't know exactly what's going on with him because you kind of just want to give him the space, but at the same time, you're concerned because he's not playing. You know, I've never seen anyone go off for a month like that just and be in that situation, you know, and be in the hospital and, and it not be necessarily football related. You know, this was something that was completely out of his control. And so you kind of had a little bit of worry, but to see him fighting back and to see him back on the field and and, and getting after it like he used to, it just uh, kind of shows you, gives you a little bit of hope. And uh, you can't help but smile every time he makes a play and uh, break the energy out there on the field. Thanks, man. Okay, Kerry Murdoch and then John Hoover. Jeremiah, I'll ask you this question since you've been around. Um, I, I'm curious when you go out there and practice against some of these guys on the defensive side of the ball, how much have you noticed just even just physically, how, how different those guys are on that side. And you see bigger guys like, you know, Key Lawrence and, and Justin Harrington and uh, even young guys that we haven't seen yet, uh, like Marcus Hicks. I mean, it just seems like the size and the strength and the speed is a little bit different than maybe when you first got here. Yeah. Yeah, for me, you know, it's, it's crazy because I look at myself personally and I – at the beginning of my journey, I was just focused on me. But now as an older guy, I can kind of sit back and look at the growth like you just mentioned. And um, I think it's been for the better. You know, those guys complement our defense. Um, all those guys that you named, I like everything that they bring right now. They're showing uh, glimpses, of, glimpses of a bright future. And so I wouldn't necessarily say that there is something that they don't have that the past guys didn't have like just character wise or anything like that. But like you said, like the stature um, is different and I like it though. It brings uh, more competition on my end. So uh, we'll see how things go. Appreciate it, Jeremiah. John Hoover and then James Hale. Hey, Jeremiah, hope you're well. Um, so I'm doing something on the young receivers, not just the young guys that are coming in this year, but you know, Marvin's year last year was amazing. Um, the precocious nature of players, freshmen, as they come into a college football program these days, as an older guy yourself, you look at those guys and say, I can't believe they're coming in this ready, or is this just the trend now that, that this is what college football demands of, of its freshmen? Uh, for me, it's a little bit of both. You know, for, for me personally, I look at it as, wow, like, I can't believe these guys are ready simply because I had to wait. 
So when I look back from my journey, I'm like, wow, like I waited, I redshirted, I was behind Carson and Dimitri and all those guys. But then I look at guys like Marvin and guys that are immediately ready to play. It's just a tale of two stories. So on one end, it's like what you expect. But on the other end, it's like, wow, you just really got to appreciate how good those guys really are and the potential that they have. So um, it, it's, it's a little bit of both. You know, I'm, I'm kind of shocked, but I'm like, eh, that's what we expect. So <laughs> that's how I am. Great. Thank you so much. Go to James Hale and then Parker Thune. Jeremiah, you've gotten better every year you've been here. So I'm curious as you go into this spring practice, uh, what are your goals? What are your goals for your group? I mean, it's an incredibly productive group, the HVAC group. You guys seem to score a touchdown in every game. So talk about the mindset and what your goal is and the group's goal going into the spring. Uh, really to be, I talked about last year having the best tight end group in the country, the best tight end. Yeah. And uh, I look back on that now, and it's kind of hard because we weren't ever all on the field at the same time. And so this year, I mean, the sky's the limit, man. I We have somewhere around 1,000 total yards of production last year. And um, like I said, we all, we all weren't even out there. So I expect the numbers this year to be astronomical, not only for myself, but for Braden, for Stog, and, and the rest of the guys. And so um, we've grown every year. And... Uh, I think this year will be the cherry on top, in my opinion. Thanks, Jeremiah. Okay, Parker Thune and then Chandler Engelbrecht. Hey, Jeremiah, thanks for taking the time. I'm just curious, you know, you're a guy who obviously pays attention to the little things, and you guys have 10 early enrollees, uh, brand new freshmen this spring. Have any of them really stood out to you? I know there are none in your particular room, but just looking around at the new guys in the room, um, or on the practice field, rather. Is there anybody that stood out to you? Uh, I think I'll have a better answer for you the more we get in the fall camp. Um, we haven't even put pads on yet. So uh, I'm, I'm going to hold off on that simply because I want to give everybody a fair shot. And so um, we'll see. We'll see. I'll have to get back to you on it. Fair enough. Anybody standing out in the weight room? Uh, in the weight room, um, we got some fast guys, man. Let me tell you that. Um, there's there's really no one person I don't I don't want to say I don't want to I don't want to give it up too early I think it's too early so I'm I'm gonna hold off. Appreciate it, Jeremiah. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Chandler Engelbrecht, and then Josh Calloway. Hey, Jeremiah. I hope you're well, man. Uh, just curious, Spencer and Marvin put on a show last season for you guys offensively. How have you seen that chemistry go grow this spring, and what are your expectations for those two heading into the season? Uh, this spring so far, uh, outside of our practices that we, our two practices that we have, just the stuff that we've done on our own, it's it's maturing. You know, Spencer is noticing things that he might not have noticed last year. He's fitting balls into gaps and holes between the defense that he didn't necessarily have this year. So he's intentional about how he approaches each and every session we have with the coaches, outside of the coaches, and. Um, that connection is, is only going to grow. It's only right. It's only natural. And so you guys will, you'll definitely see that come the spring game and especially here in the fall. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Did I, I haven't gone to you yet, Josh, have I Callaway? No, no. Okay. You're up next or now, and then we'll go to Lee Benson to close it out. Josh. Yeah, Jeremiah, I just wanted to ask about Mikey Anderson, uh, obviously a guy that you've worked with uh, closely. Uh, he actually is listed as running back now on, on the roster. Just, I guess, he's kind of become a bit of a fan favorite with what he can do on the field. Just, I guess, thoughts on what his spring is going to be like and what the growth he can make from this spring going into next season. Yeah, yeah, Mikey is with the running backs now. And so I don't – I can't really speak for the coaches in terms of what they expect, but – what I expect for Mikey is just to start dialing in on the little things. You know, last year was more of him knowing what to do since he played so many roles. You guys saw it out there. And so this year, I think he needs to take that next step to not only know what to do, but to take advantage of when he sees opportunities on the field and to make every rep count as well. Because like I said earlier, there's competition not only in my room, but in his room as well. So as soon as he can uh, dial in and mature a little bit, then it'll be all the better for him. And I think he'll do so more this spring. Last question, Lee Benson. 
Jeremiah, I think you're a good guy to comment on this since you've played with him uh, previously in previous years, but curious what you've seen from Kennedy. I, I know it's very early, I haven't put the pads on yet, but uh, is it is it reasonable to expect him to jump right in and be as good as he was in 2019, the last time you saw him, or is that kind of unfair given the situation that is a unique situation that he didn't play last year and that doesn't normally happen? Just so curious your thoughts on Kennedy. Yeah, uh, Kennedy's um, my best friend. He's my roommate. And so it would only be right for me to tell you guys that he doesn't expect anything less of himself. You know, if anything, he's picking up right back where he started. Um, physically, he's still there. Mentally, he's still there. And so he may have been gone. He might have been gone for a year, but that doesn't mean he didn't work. You know, he's uh, he's ready and he expects to compete and uh, put on a show.